Welcome to LOA Today. Wolf Thiessen and life, a friend, a new life coach. Actually, uh, life coach David Barkey is no longer with us. He has not. No, I, I don't mean he's no longer with us. I don't mean it quite that way. I mean, he's decided <laughs> he's moved on to other things. No, you, you people have the dirtiest minds, I tell you. No, seriously, David has decided he needed to move on to other things in his life. Uh, and we, of course, are, are sad to see that he's going, but uh, we wish him well. And you know, he may even be back sometime for an occasional drop in, which would be really great. But we have a new co host on. Sunday evenings, Anne Marie Knada McEwen, a friend of Louise's and mine. We uh, actually made friends with her and Mike last uh, December for the first time. She lives uh, somewhat nearby to where Louise and I live here in Connecticut, in Middletown, Connecticut, where she is the director of the Buttonwood Tree, a cultural arts center in Middletown. And uh, she's also very well versed in the law of attraction. In fact, interesting little <laughs> side story is that Anne Marie had posted something online where she and Mike were doing a a series. It was I, I believe it was through Meetup.com, if I remember correctly, on the law of attraction. And I found that, and I ended up contacting her because Louise and I were looking for law of attraction friends, people into the law of attraction. So there's an idea that gives you a good clue about you know where Mike and Anne Marie are at. And uh, the, the other thing that I should tell you about Anne Marie and Mike is that the four of us, whenever we go out to dinner, we close restaurants. That's how interesting they are th- that we all are to talk with each other. So Anne Marie, welcome to the podcast. We're glad to have you here. Thank you, Walt. Thank you very much for that very nice introduction, <laughs> very elaborate introduction. Thank you very much. Well, our listeners it's a are eager to be here. I'm I'm excited. I've been listening to your podcast uh, for a while now and really enjoying it. And uh, so I, I really appreciate you inviting me on. Thank you very much. I hope oh, I glad to do, do it. it justice and share some good stories. With, oh, you uh, will, with the listeners. I have no doubt that you will. Just because, I mean, I w- this was full disclosure. I mean, our listeners really do need to know just why it is I picked you. It's because when the four of us get together, we can't stop talking. That means there's no <laughs> lack of content whenever we get together. So I figure, hey, an hour, we can handle that one. That's like, you know, we can do that with two hands tied behind our backs. No problem at all. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, too. Every time we've gone out, I, I think the last time we didn't actually close the restaurant. And it was only because I didn't want to close the restaurant. I didn't want to make the uh, the wait staff stand around waiting for us to decide to go out the door while they're looking at their watches saying, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. But uh, actually, I think the last time we saw you guys was around the fourth when you invited us down to uh, watch the fireworks with you, which was really fun. It was kind of a picnic that, uh, oh, that you had set up for fun. your volunteers. That was fun. Yeah. Yes, we had a we had a uh, I invited up all of the well, not all but a lot of the volunteers at the Buttonwood Tree and and just to get together and have a good time. So we had like a little cookout before the fireworks, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm so glad you came and joined us. Yeah, oh, it was great. I mean, it, it was also kind of an unusual evening because it was the first time I'd ever seen a fireworks barge catch on fire and end the fireworks display. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That actually was a topic for conversation at the next podcast, I might add. But <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's right. I remember you talking about that. <laughs> That was funny. Yeah. Hopefully that won't happen again. Oh, I hope not. No, but it was unique. I'd never seen that before. It was right as the, the display was really getting going, too. I mean, it was a nice display they had going on. It's kind of a shame that that, yeah. that happened. But fortunately, nobody was hurt. So that was the main thing. Yeah. Middletown does a nice job. They really do. Very, very nice. Yeah, I was quite impressed. I mean, it's not like Middletown is a major city. And yet, whoa, they sure, certainly act like it for the fourth. Whew. <laughs> yeah, I guess we like to celebrate a lot. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a New England town, so you know that kind of goes without saying. Really, <laughs> people around the country are saying, "What on earth is he talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> right. You have to be here. You just have to live here. You have to understand by living here. That's all there is to it. Right. Everybody move to Middletown. You'll see. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> now, if they were to move to Middletown. If they went down to Main Street, they would find this little, it, it's like in a, a retail shop, basically, a thing called the Buttonwood Tree. And we've talked about it a little bit indirectly here on the podcast, but uh, we haven't had you on to talk about it. So tell our audience, what's the Buttonwood Tree all about? Okay, well, first of all, let me clarify. We're talking about Middletown, Connecticut, because there are many Middletowns in uh, all over the world, probably. Well, this but, is true. We're talking yes. about Middletown, Connecticut. So I just want to clarify that. that that's first. a very good point, yes. <coughs> Even though so, those of us who live in Connecticut think there's only one Middletown in the world. But nevertheless, your point is well taken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
So the Buttonwood Tree is a nonprofit performing arts center that has been around for 29 years. And I'm excited about celebrating our 30th year next year. Woo! Uh, yes, but we were started by a Wesleyan alumni who is a poet. And um, I should say was a poet because she recently passed mm. on um, May 15th. Oh. She just passed away. Yeah. But uh, Susan Allison started the Buttonwood Tree with her husband, Stephen Allison, back in 1989 as a used bookstore. And it was a place where poets could gather uh, to talk about anything in the world. And so she held salons and she also held yoga classes and she sold books and people gathered there at the time in Middletown. Middletown wasn't doing so well. And it was a place that um, people could get together and just safely get together and talk about current events or talk about the arts or share their music. And Stephen was a DJ at WPKN at the time, and he started bringing in musical acts, and people started uh, coming from all over the place to play music. So it became known as um, the Buttonwood Tree uh, as just a, a really eclectic, artistic uh, community space. And over the years, it, it sort of has it changed locations once because there was a big fire and they were homeless for two years and had to get a new space and so in 1997 we moved to the air the uh, aragoni hotel what used to be the aragoni hotel or arawani hotel or march in it had many different <laughs> names as it spanned the years from i don't know about 1920 or so but um but anyway, it's now a supportive housing unit. Uh, so there's 40 apartments above us, and we take the bottom floor of this old hotel. It's a beautiful building with tall ceilings and exposed brick, and it's just got a great vibe, and it's got a great sound. So musicians love to play the room at the Buttonwood Tree. It's very small. It only holds about 45 people, so it's a very intimate show. I mean, you know, some other... Some other um, uh, performing venues talk about the, their intimacy, and I'm like, dude, you got nothing. <laughs> us. We got intimate down. <laughs> this is true, very true. So, um, so mu musicians love to play the Buttonwood Tree, and they know us from all over the world. So musicians are knocking our at our doors to play there, and I sort of, as the executive director, I pick and choose who I who I want to come and perform, and and likewise, local acts uh, want to play there. You know, sometimes. A musician might be a, just a part-time musician. It's like not their, not their profession, but they may, they might have picked up the guitar ten years ago, and now they just came out with a CD and they want to share it with their friends and family. Well, where do you go? Sure. Well, the Buttonwood Tree is where you go. Okay. So we have uh, all kinds of different performances. We do folk and jazz and bluegrass and gypsy jazz and singer songwriters and a little bit of hip hop and. All, all, just all kinds of music. We also have done comedy and we have some films and we have done dance performances and we've done a little bit of theater, a little bit of everything, but mostly music, I'd say. And we also still run a used bookstore. So we, we have two rooms. Well, we have a restroom and we have two <laughs> main rooms and one room, the performance room is also an art gallery. And, um, and then uh, the other room is the bookstore and cafe where we serve coffee and snacks and things like that and we pretty much run on volunteers we have a wonderful volunteer staff and uh, every friday and saturday night we have some kind of show we also have four different open mics every monday night we have an open mic from seven to ten it's called anything goes open mic <laughs> and <laughs> I put an alarm on for the show, and I just keep silencing it. I think. Sorry about that. <laughs> did, you, right. did you hear that? I hope you didn't hear that. Uh, actually, you went silent for a second, so it, it worked out okay. Okay. Uh, so we have, uh, like I said, we have that open mic. We also host. Uh, well, actually, Bob Gata hosts the longest continually running open mic in the state of Connecticut, hmm. and that's on the first Thursday of every. A month from seven to nine, Bob Gotta holds an acoustic open mic. And then we just started a teen open mic on the third Saturdays from three to five in the afternoon. So 
uh, kind of a little bit of, of everything. You know, if you want to do poetry or dance or whatever, you come on a Monday. And there's also a lot of music on Monday. But I have seen from five years old uh, to I think the oldest performer I've seen was 86. Wow. So uh, just a whole range of performers or people who just want to share them, you know, their talents or their, their poem that they just wrote that they've never shared with anybody. We see a lot of that happening as well. And it's, it's just an amazing thing to see somebody share such an intimate part of themselves with a group of strangers for the first time. It's just like, it's so amazing to see that. So I love the butt wintry and I love the open mics. So that's one of the things that we do that I think is just really endearing and fabulous for the community. It's just a great opportunity for people to have that space. And um, we also do moments of gratitude on Monday nights, which is just a little bit of time that I sort of started, uh, well, I didn't sort of start. I did start (laughs) where people can share things, excuse me, that they're grateful for. And people are always commenting on how grateful they are for the button entry. So if you've never been, I highly suggest you come down and check Mm, it out. Yeah. And and now also for people who (laughs) might not know what it is, what on earth is a buttonwood tree? I mean, that's not exactly a common (laughs) species, really. (laughs) Well, I'll, I'll explain. Sure. So that's, and I, I get asked that question a lot. Mm-hmm. So back when Susan started her bookstore there, um, she's quite a, into history as well. And she looked at the old map and the street that her little shop was on was originally called Avenue of the Buttonwoods. So she, but there were none when the time, when, when she had her sh- store, there weren't, there were none left. And so she wanted to keep alive the memory of the buttonwood tree and where she came from when they moved over to the new location and just keep that alive. So they, they named the, um, her shop, which used to be called Ibis books. They sort of named, they changed it into the buttonwood tree. Now you might say, well, I've never heard of a buttonwood tree. What kind of tree is that? Well, it's actually a nickname for the sycamore tree. Oh, really? Because back in the early days, I would, I think around the 1600s, my good friend Alan Poole taught me, who is a, a tree, tree person, I forget what you call, an arborist. Uh, he taught me that there's a seed pod on the sycamore tree. And when you open it up, the, the hard nut inside makes, and the long stem makes a really good button. And, and years ago, they used to make buttons out oh. of the seed pods from the sycamore tree. And that's how it got nicknamed the buttonwood oh, tree. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, I love it because buttons connect. And that's one thing that the buttonwood tree does really well. It connects. Uh-huh. It connects artists to artists, artists to fans. Connects friends. I can't tell you how many times people have come to the butt wintry and run into just serendipitously run into an old friend or an old lover or you know somebody or family members. I've had people come in who are family members who didn't even know that the other one you know was going to go, <laughs> and there they are together. They hadn't seen each other in years. It's crazy. Well, Louise and I did that. Remember. We came down for the uh, the New Year's Eve celebration, which wasn't That's actually right. held at the Buttonwood. It was down the street. But we ran into an old friend of mine from uh, the dance community. I was into swing dancing for many, many years. And Marilyn was one of my many dance partners. And, and we saw right. her there. I was like, oh, my God, what are you doing here? <laughs> That's right. It's so wonderful to see. In fact, we've had over 14 that I know of, 14 couples who have gone on to get married wow. after meeting at the Buttonwood tree. Very cool. That's you know, really great. Including myself. Yeah, that's right. Because so, you, you and Mike met there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, you got to tell that oh, yeah. story because that's a great story. I mean, it's really Mike's okay. story, but you got to tell you got to tell your part of the story. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell my story. I'll tell my story. Uh, I want to finish uh, first, though, telling people about the Butwin Tree sure. because it's uh, it's more than music and it's more than open mics. It's also drum circles and sound healings and yoga classes including laughter yoga and you <laughs> laughter might say, yoga there laughter is. yoga yeah. what is laughter yoga like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i've heard people say yeah if i get into some of those positions you'd be laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but 
Yes. Laughter yoga has nothing to do with uh, different asanas or positions. It has to do with breathing. Yoga is all about breathing. And when you laugh, actually, you are exercising your diaphragm. True. And breathing is, of course, so essential to us. When we when we focus on our breathing, it's a really good thing for us to do. In fact, that's how a lot of people meditate, of course, is by focusing on our breathing. So breathing is a, an important part of laughter yoga. and really what it is, it's a tool that you can develop through practice to help you manage stress. So if you practice laughter yoga, you practice laughing when there's really nothing to laugh about. When (laughs) it's not that you heard a funny joke or anything, or somebody else is laughing. It's like you just practice laughing at this, just to laugh. And as you practice that, then it makes it easier for you to laugh when you don't really even feel like laughing. This is true. That's a good skill to have, by the way. It's a great skill to have. So when you're really frustrated or upset or I find I find I I utilize it mostly when I'm frustrated or exasperated or I'm sitting at the computer and I'm trying to do one thing and I'm finding that before I can do that thing, I have to download a new program or I have to close this or I have to do that. It's it's just getting like ridiculous. And so I if I if I laugh and I have to force myself to do that, but if I can laugh, eventually I will feel better. And that's the whole point is to change your vibrational state from one of frustration or, or disappointment or something like that, something negative to something either neutral or even positive. Now, I love the fact so, that uh, when you promote laughter yoga, you're promoting the idea of managing stress, which makes a lot of sense because, as Louise has taught me, stress is what happens when you don't breathe properly. It's it's a, it's like there's a that's the direct mm-hmm. connection. When, when we're feeling stress, invariably we're, we're breathing shallowly, and laughter yoga is a great way to uh, combat that. But even more than that, and I'm curious to know how much you actually when, when you're conducting your laughter yoga uh, sessions or classes or, or whatever they are. I'm not sure what they are, but they're set there. They're sessions for sure. Um, when mm-hmm. you, when you're conducting them, do you also talk about the, the healing aspects of laughter? Because there's a lot of medical evidence that shows laughter is directly involved in bodily healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in the beginning of the class, we usually start seated in a circle and the instructor or the leader will, uh, we'll talk about the origin of laughter yoga and how it, it was started by Dr. Kataria back in 1995 in India and da, 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 and all the benefits and not all the benefits, but certainly some of the benefits of laughter. And mm. they'll, they'll talk about that. But I think, I think even, I want to say time magazine, I think just did a, an article on laughter and the benefits. They did. That was a cover. Yeah. They, they did a cover on, yeah. on the benefits of laughter. Yeah. In fact, I think Robin yeah. Williams was on that cover with that. If I remember correctly, yeah, I I remember looking at it. I want to buy that, but it was like thirteen dollars. I was like, I'm not going to buy that. Sorry, <laughs> but I really wanted to read the article, so maybe I should just go buy it. But uh, you know, there's so much science about how important laughter is for us, and I think it's so amazing that God created this body that can actually heal itself mm. if we just feed it the right nutrients and and don't stress it out and and even if there is stress look there's a tool you can use to manage your stress just laugh yeah that's true it's crazy it's absolutely crazy how really simple life could be and how difficult we make it (laughs) my first co-host back in late 2012 into 2013 was my sister-in-law yona who uh, is still in pursuit of a phd in the neurosciences and she was the one who introduced me to the fact that um, science has been able to determine that from the moment that the human uh, animal laughs, from that moment, there is a signal sent via neurotransmitters from the brain to whatever part of the body is in most in need of healing. And that signal takes an, an entire time of 90 seconds to get there and begin the healing, the healing process. So literally... When we laugh, even if it's laughter yoga where there's nothing particular we're laughing at, we're just laughing for the sake of laughing, 
90 seconds later, any healing we need is starting is starting off. It's like the, it's kicking into high gear because wow. of, of the t- neurotransmitter uh, sending that chemical signal out through the body. Heal, heal, heal. Wow, that's it's, amazing. Isn't that interesting? I, I knew that before, yeah. long before I heard about laughter yoga, but I, I just think it's fascinating <laughs> that, you know, when you put the two together, like, wow, you can actually fake yourself into healing. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, that's a very cool uh, thing. I'll never forget, in one of our laughter yoga classes, uh, the leader talked about a friend of hers who was also a laughter y- leader, and she had a, she had broken her uh, her shin bone, and the bone was coming through the skin. The bone was sticking right out. Mm, ouch. And she started laughing. And even when the paramedics got there and she was in the ambulance, she laughed the entire way. <laughs> and she said it really helped because when – when you're laughing, and I, I can't even imagine this because I don't think I've ever done this actually, but she said, when you're laughing, you don't act, actually feel pain. It well, yeah, that, that's actually one of the – yeah, that, that's one of the reasons why this whole um, neurotransmitter transmission thing is studied because the neurotransmitters involved are painkillers. They're, pain, mm-hmm. they're, they're anti-pain receptors like endorphin. Endorphins yeah. are, are basically painkillers. And, and basically, the reason that the scientists were even, you know, studying the whole thing was just to find out what happens with the natural painkillers. And what they ended mm-hmm. up finding is not only does it actually kill the pain, it also starts the healing process at the same time. So you, know, you get basically well, a two for one special. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> two for one. Laugh your way to a two for one. That's wow. right. Yeah. That's great. So I so I really promote laughing, and I try to get my husband to laugh as much as possible. And you know, <laughs> which doesn't take a lot thing. of work. Mike Mike is not a hard person to get laughing. He he's, he was like <laughs> he he wakes up every morning laughing. I think. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Not quite. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm <laughs> exaggerating quite. just a little bit, though. I mean, seriously. Every time I've ever talked he's to him, though. he's got a big smile on his face, and and every third word has a laugh behind it. I mean, yep. he's a very happy yep. person. It's really something. He is. He is. I mean, and that's where you know, the first time I saw him, uh, we were sitting in the laughter yoga class, and I looked at him, and he was laughing, and his <laughs> big broad smile. I said, "Wow!" I said, "There's a guy who spends a lot of time being happy," <laughs> and I really was attracted to that so um so here we are <laughs> yeah yeah yep that's how that's how i met mike at laughter yoga and that was uh quite uh quite a story there but well his story anyway. the, how he ended up getting to uh the buttonwood tree for that meeting was itself a, a pretty good story i mean it's actually written up in the book that we published this past may um that's right. and, and in that story he, I remember. I don't remember exactly how he said it, but the gist of it was: I have no idea why I'm going to this meeting. <laughs> yeah, he was led so, there. He was just led there. Yeah. Be, you know, he, he was supposed to meet you apparently, but he didn't know what it was yeah. going to be for. I think so. I think he just followed his gut. You know, he's mm-hmm. pretty good at that. You know, you just follow your gut, and all of a sudden, he's signing up for laughter yoga, and then he's like, "Wait a minute, laughter yoga at the boat? What the heck? What is the that? heck is that?" <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know he's actually well qualified for it, but nevertheless, he did That's it kind right. of blindly, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I told him, I said, you know, one of these days I really want to become a laughter leader because I really think it's important and it's it's not too difficult. You ha- it's about a weekend. I think you have to spend a weekend, uh, you know, like two days of eight hours of training. Well, it's and, funny uh, because... I'd like to do that one day. Before this year, I'd never heard of laughter yoga, and now I have two co-hosts who are into it because Tom Wells who does the Monday and Friday morning podcast has also done laughter yoga out in Colorado. And now here you are talking about, and I'm thinking, wow, is this like some phenomenon I hadn't heard about before? What's going on here? (laughs) (laughs) Well, hopefully it'll take over the world. We'll all be laughing, doing laughter. Hey, there are much worse things to do. I mean, when you consider all the alternatives, that one's a pretty good one. It's basically spreading mirth. Even if you're, you're starting from a, a, a fake mirth to begin with, because that's the thing, isn't it? When it, it, It's a contagious thing. It, it can be forced mm-hmm. at first. I mean, I'm sure it feels kind of forced when you guys do a session, you're getting it started. But after you get going, everybody's been through that. Everybody has experienced that, regardless of whether they've been to a laughter yoga, just by sitting in an audience where a comedian was holding forth. And all that mm-hmm. comedian has to do is get the audience going, and it just start, starts rolling. It gets to the point where, right. where the comedian says, may I have a glass of water? And the audience laughs just because yep. the laughter has gone so much, right? Yeah, and and it's truly contagious. It really is contagious, and it's it's such a healthy thing. It's amazing, and it's so much fun. It's like who doesn't want to laugh? Who doesn't like to laugh? <laughs> right? You know. Yep. 
so it, it's really uh, it's really sad how underused it is mm-hmm. <laughs> and how you know some people are afraid to laugh because some people are self-conscious about laughing and and that's one of the things we do in laughter yoga is we we try out different laughs like the leader will guide you into utilizing different types of laughter so that uh, when you're at home and you want to like just practice laughing, it's a really good thing to do when you're driving. Just practice laughing. And you'd be surprised at how difficult it is actually to laugh for any length of time. Oh, yeah. To do it deliberately? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're yeah, Dick Van Dyke, of hard. course. If you're Dick Van Dyke and you're playing in the movie Mary Poppins some 50 years ago, <laughs> he didn't have any trouble with it for some reason. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> in fact, he, he even itemized what the different kinds of laughter were in the song that he sang. You remember that? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, I mean, he, I remember Dick Van Dyke, but I don't remember. Tell me, do you let, remember? Let's see. The lyric was, uh, some laugh too fast, some only blast, other they twitter like birds. And, he, and he's you know repeating all these different kinds of laughs as he's, as he's singing oh. the song. And then there are some that can't make up their mind, you know, and they're laughing all different kinds of laugh styles. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to look that up. That's yeah. cool. Very silly. That's well, of course, they're all having a tea party on the ceiling, which is a pretty silly thing. <laughs> yes, I guess so, yes. <laughs> So the other thing about laughter yoga that I really appreciate is uh, a little song that we sing. Oh, really? You have a song that goes with it? Yeah, it's a song. And you can even go on YouTube and look it up. And mostly around the world, they sing it the same way. Excuse me one second. I have to clear my throat. That's all right. Take a moment. (laughs) That's the one thing about doing a podcast. It's nice to have somebody else to be talking to because then if you need to take care of yourself or mute your mic, you know the other person will cover you. It's okay. No big deal. (laughs) Thank you, Walt. Thank you. Yes. So there's a little song that we sing, and I've taught it to my granddaughter. And um, I wanted to teach it to my whole church, but uh, they haven't quite accepted that yet. But (laughs) I sing it to myself in the shower a lot. And it's very, okay. I think it's a very therapeutic song. Okay. Because it it's basically you talking to your body and you talking to your cells in your body. The other day I was listening to somebody who said, when your, cell, when your cells, now this is, this is understanding that every cell in our body has consciousness. So when you talk directly to your cells, it's like your cells are listening to God. That's kind of spooky when you think about it. I mean, if my my cells are looking up to me, uh, man, I I, I hope I'm not disappointing them. I mean, really. (laughs) Well, they're they're listening to what you're saying. I guess so. so, This song, I think, is very uh, powerful. I think it has a lot of uh, possibilities and a lot of potential. And the way the song goes is, and I I won't sing you the whole song, but basically it repeats two lines and it says every little cell in my body is happy okay and little cell in my body is happy every little cell in my body is well i'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well and it's a it just repeats that kind of those two verses over and over again in a little so it's kind of like a a, very easy it's like a melodic affirmation in a sense that's right That's right. That's exactly right. And it's very easy to remember and it's very simple and you can do it all anytime. And actually in laughter yoga class, when we do it, we do that along with tapping. So you sort of tap your body all over as you're singing this song to kind of wake up your cells and activate certain, uh, certain points in your body. What points? I'm losing that word right now, but, um, Meridian. Meridian points, uh, I, that could be that could be it, but you, know, you activate all of these points in your body and it helps to wake them up and it helps to move things. You know, we don't move our bodies enough. We really, our bodies were designed to move and so you got to move and you got to tap and you got to stretch them and exercise them and all that kind of stuff. So this is true. just singing that song and tapping your body, that's a healthy thing for you to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So you basically have... Uh... Uh, a song that goes with it. You have an activity of laughing, and you, you're moving the body around. So, this mm-hmm. is a uh, this is a full blown exercise with a happy twist to it. That's right. That's, that's right. And that's what laughter yoga is about. And anybody can do it at any age. It doesn't require any particular kind of flexibility or anything like that. You just have to sort of let your ego 
go, you know, not worry about your ego because you can't worry about, well, well what are other people thinking about how I'm laughing or. Well, fortunately, if like you're doing it in laughing. a group, everybody in the group is doing it. So there's nobody who's going to be looking at you saying, oh, you look so stupid doing that. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> we all look pretty silly doing it. <laughs> That's but right. It's all okay. It's, it's childlike. It's good. It's, it's okay. And, you know? and there's something also to be said for the fact that we are uh, not, well, not me. I, I haven't actually been part of your laughter yoga um, uh, setting, so to speak. But we are all, in every aspect of our lives, involved in trying to get ourselves into better feeling places, at least those of us who are deliberate creators or attempting to learn to be deliberate creators using the law of attraction. And laughing is probably one of the best ways we can get there. Because, I mean, there are times, right, when all of us, I, I've, I've actually been experiencing that a, a little bit lately, but there are times when it's just hard to move into that positive range, that, that positive emotional range can seem like it's out of reach. Even though you were there the last four days in a row, that today, for some reason, you can't seem to get there. Well, right. la laughter is a good right. way to get there. That's right. And I, uh, you know, I, I think I think if you're really, really down, laughter is, it's, it's a you know, I find appreciation, for me personally, appreciation is a little bit easier or or even feeling gratitude. Because I know, you know, you had a great conversation the other day about the difference between gratitude and appreciation. And, you know, you were right on with all that stuff. And I and I love how you brought up that appreciation it has the, the same vibration as bliss. I love that. Yeah, and that's something. So I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to say, oh, I just switched over to, um, can you still hear me okay? Uh, yeah, I, I think you actually accidentally hit the little speaker button on your app because your your voice tonality switched, which makes me wonder if you're on speaker. Okay, how's that? Uh, there you are, <laughs> Is you're that back. Better? Much better, yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry about that. That's all right. So, what I was saying is for me, feeling gratitude, I should say feeling gratitude, helps me to get there. It's easier for me to do that than when I'm trying to change from a really negative uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. um, it it's easier for me to feel gratitude, but sometimes, but it's also sort of simpler. If I'm sitting at my computer for some reason and being frustrated, laughter is an easier way for me to get out of it and for me to like what I call pivot to the positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Good exercise. But to if do. I'm feeling, yes, pivoting to the positive, it's a very good exercise that, I've, of course, I learned through Abraham and Abraham Hicks. Mm -hmm. But, um, but gratitude. If I think when I'm feeling other types of negative emotion, gratitude is a way for me to get out of that. But feeling gratitude, laughter, same, you know, same objective is mm -hmm. to change us from a negative or a, a down vibration to a more positive vibration. Yeah, it's very good for that. And, and it'll move you quickly. That's the thing that I especially like laughing about. or Well, not necessarily mm -hmm. laughing at that, but you know, I like laughter for that purpose, put it that way, <laughs> because it does move you there mm -hmm. quickly, you know, right. especially if you're doing it with friends. That's the thing that makes it really easy. If you're talking with friends, like, you know, when the four of us get together and go out to dinner, you know, we're laughing half the time that we're eating there. It just comes naturally. It comes easily right. because we're all in this, you know, high vibrational conversation that we're all so excited about. You know, you get like that, boy, you just fly really quickly. It doesn't matter how you came in. That's right. That's right. And it, it's, uh, I think it's a lot easier when you're around other people yeah. to, to get into that higher vibration. You know, it's just, you're for, we're with friends, so it's just naturally better to, exactly. to do that. Sometimes when you're alone, you get stuck in your head, or even if you're with your partner, you're still stuck in your head and stuck in your funk, and it's a little bit harder to get out. But as soon as you put yourself around other people, you kind of know that you kind of have to push yourself out of it and even fake your way into uh, being uh, more positive. And then if you if you stay with that, you eventually become more positive. It becomes a true feeling rather than a pretend feeling. Oh, but definitely. But you just got to push your way through it. Yeah. You know? Well, it actually doesn't take all that much pushing if you're doing it with friends. Because, I mean, that's basically – this is my, my constant theme, how much I enjoy doing the podcast. But literally, I enjoy doing the podcast so much because I have so many friends I'm doing it with. Many of them – I mean, you're actually one of the few mm -hmm. co-hosts I've, I've met <laughs> in person. I mean, <laughs> right. the, the others I've never actually met in person, or, or at least many of them I haven't. 
But uh, even with that fact, kind of you know, baldly staring me in the face, I mean, they're all friends. So I'm having a conversation with a different friend on a podcast each day. And invariably, there's something fun to, to laugh at or to joke about or, or just smile about or just feel good about. And it picks me up every time. I, I actually have a, sort of an NLP um, association now with doing the podcast. All I have to do is think about the podcast and get ready to do the podcast. And within five minutes, I'm, I'm like five levels up on the emotional scale just because of that. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. When well, you said NLP, what did you mean by NLP? Ne- Neuro linguistic programming. The idea that oh, if, if okay. you keep if you keep reinforcing the same behavior over and over again, and it keeps producing the same kind of emotional result, it, you you are basically programming yourself for that. So all you have to do is you know touch the association, and you start feeling the result because of, of the programming that has gone in. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. The, the same way you start salivating when you think about pizza or cake exactly. or something. Yeah, same kind of thing. Yep. Gotcha. All you have to do is gotcha. just mention it and, and the association happens instantly. And if it's a really strong association, uh, like the podcast is for me and for my co- co-host, I'm glad to say, it, it, it just kind of transports you. Um, in fact, I think it's actually happening for our listeners too, which I'm really, really happy about. It, it's showing up at least, we'll put it this way. We have so many listeners who are listening to so many episodes. I figure they must like it. Otherwise they wouldn't do it, right? <laughs> that's gotta be the only way to, that, that uh, you're going to continue to download all these episodes. And that's exactly what's happening. In fact, yesterday, Amory, I mean, normally the weekends are a little bit slower in terms of downloads because I can see what days, mm-hmm. you know, downloads are happening. Normally Monday through Friday, which makes sense. That's when most of our episodes are. Those are the days when we get all the downloads. Usually the weekend, you know, it kind of drops off. You can see the graph. It's like an up and down graph and, and the down part is the weekend and the up part is the rest of the week. Well, yesterday, I think we had something like six or 700 downloads and we're normally like around one or 200. So, you know... It, what it, what it tells me wow. is people are tuning in at all different kinds of, of times and and I've even made note of the fact that we have binge listeners now people who listen to a whole bunch of episodes in a row I think a lot of them are doing it on the weekends now which is really cool <laughs> wow so apparently That's great news yeah it is great news so apparently you know this this podcast thing isn't just good for me and it isn't just good for my co-host. It's good for all of us. So I, I kind of like to see this as this phenomenon that's just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, an emerging phenomenon that only a few hundred people know about, but more and more people are going to learn about it over time. And, uh, well, that reminds me, I got to get our, our announcements in here. First announcement for those of you who are existing subscribers, you've been listening for a while and we love you for being listeners. We want you to take a moment to send something out on your favorite social media channel that includes the phrase LOAToday.net because we've been doing that as an experiment for about uh, 10 days now, 11 days now. And as a result of that, we're seeing a spike in traffic. We're seeing more and more people. um, We're we're seeing an increase in growth that is faster than what we were getting before. So it's already paying off. And yet, even as I do my searching around to find who's – uh, who's doing it, it's actually a small number of listeners who are doing it. I, I just keep imagining, Anne what if all of the listeners just took the time to put one note out? Can you imagine how many more people would find about LOA today? Because even with just a few, you know, one or two percent doing it, we're seeing a spike in traffic. I can only imagine what the spike would look like if, mm-hmm. if you know, like all of our 150-odd uh, regular subscribers were to put something out there. So that, that's what I keep hoping. I keep hoping one day they're going to say, you know what, I really should do that. I should do exactly what Walt said. They haven't done it yet, but I keep hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just keep imagining it, and yeah. uh, and someday it'll get there, you know, slowly but Absolutely. surely. Oh, yeah. So, Absolutely. No, yeah, well, now there's, get there. No, yeah. it's also the second thing. I, I said there were two messages. The second message is for people who are not yet subscribers. Perhaps this is one of the first episodes they've ever listened to, which is great. We love it. We're glad that you made it, and we're glad that uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. If, if, you've, uh, if this is your first episode and you've already stuck it out for the first 38 minutes, you probably like it. That's a good thing. So we want to encourage you to become a subscriber as well. All you have to do is go to the homepage of the website at LOAToday.net. The instructions are right there. It's really easy. It takes about a minute. And when you're all done, all of the episodes, as they're created, get sent automatically to your iPhone or your Android or tablet or whatever device you're using. So you can listen and play anytime you want to. So there we have our two promotional announcements for the day, (laughs) which is important. Very good. Very good. Yay! <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's now that's a phrase oh. you you and Mike introduced Louise and I to VGVGY. 
Where did that come from? Very good, yes, very good. Yes, that's yay. right. Well, that's another thing from laughter yoga. In fact, uh, laughter yoga. In, after we do our our little exercises, we do uh, we sort of clap our hands to the left and then clap our hands to the right and then lift our hands over our head, saying "Very good, very good, yay." When you lift your hands over your head, it automatically reduce, um, produces endorphins that make you feel better. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah. So, and then I, I learned that through laughter yoga. So, imagine all the people in the football stadium lifting their hands over their heads, mm-hmm. back and forth, back and forth. That makes you feel better. Okay. Okay. So, very good, very good, yay, is something that... Mike and I say to each other, uh, just to encourage each other and lift each other up and, you know, sort of it's like a pat on the back, you know, mm-hmm. just encouraging each other. And, and, uh, when we text, we, you know, we started when, when we met and we were starting to text back and forth, writing out very good, very good. Yay. is a, <laughs> a little bit long. So we made the abbreviation of VGVGY. So now we can just say VGVGY. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know what we mean. Yeah, that's good. Well, hey, <laughs> you know, I think. I mean, there are a lot of That's famous the acronyms, society right? society is going now. It's uh, oh, yeah. abbreviating everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, how many of them? LOL, IDK. I mean, there, there are so many of them out there right now. So why not VGVGY? Well, that's right. You know, Kentucky Fried Chicken is now KFC, KFC right? KFC, that's right. So. They don't even call it Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. <laughs> they don't. It's KFC, babe. It's, it's KFC. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, the, what, what does the colonel think? Like, the colonel must be rolling over. Like, what did they do to the name of my place? I can't believe it. <laughs> probably (laughs) poor guy oh Oh, yeah but so we have a lot of fun at laughter yoga and so that's one of the things that uh we've been doing for many years of the buttonwood tree that i'm really proud of and i really wish more people would take advantage of it because it's it's such a useful tool but you know it's like anything in life walt you really have to push yourself to practice it to do it and it's stepping out of your comfort zone and a lot of people don't want to do that they don't want to step out of their comfort zone so they wind up getting sick and going to doctors and popping pills and dying early and i don't want to see our society doing that i want to see us living healthy natural lives where we're full of vigor and health and and laughter and we live long prosperous successful lives Mm. and you can do it naturally you just have to get out of your comfort zone and practice natural tools like laughing absolutely well, plus you also, if, if you're living in the Middletown, Connecticut area, you've got the buttonwood available because, I mean, you guys actually have something going on practically every day of the week, don't you? We do. Uh, it seems like that. You know, one thing or another, whether it's a yoga class or or uh, laughter yoga or sound healing or an open mic or a, or a storytelling event. We have two storytelling programs, one on the first Friday and one on the second uh, second Sunday. So you can come and tell a story and, you know, there's just so many things you can do. And if you have a program that you want to share with other people or you have a talent or you want to start a discussion group or start a book club or something like that, you know, it's always, you can always come to the Budwin Tree and, and we'll try to find a spot in our schedule for you. That, that's what's so amazing because, I mean, like you were describing earlier, the Budwin Tree is two not really big rooms on Main Street in Middletown. And one of them is basically your your bookstore and sort of like a cafe. The other one is where all the stuff happens, and it's also where your piano is. And it's, it, it's not like this really big space, like you said. Was it maximum forty five people? And yet, right. with, with with facilities that small, my God, you got stuff going on every, every day of the week. I I don't know that there are many small venues can that can promise and, and claim that. I mean, most of the small venues I've seen of any kind, you know, maybe they've got something going on the weekend, you know, like. Uh, Friday night, maybe maybe Thursday night, you know, Monday if they're lucky, but seven nights a week? Nah, you don't see that very often. <laughs> no, no, you don't. That's because I have a hard time saying no. I like <laughs> I like letting people do what they want to do. So. <laughs> you want to do that? That sounds great. Sure, bring it on. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, so, so, so let's, let's go back. my weakness. There we go. Right in the first show. There's my weakness. <laughs> One hey, of them anyway. <laughs> I got, I got to warn you, Anne Marie. I mean, uh, David, who also lives in our area in Connecticut, he lives in the Hartford area. Um, is one of our listeners and he and Louise and I met one time, had a great, uh, um, coffee together and so forth. And in the course of, uh, of that meeting, that, that luncheon that we had, he said to me, Walt, you do realize I know everything about you. 
<laughs> and I had to think about that and realize, you know what? He does because I, I talk about my life on the podcast. So it, it's like it's an open book. So I, I got to warn you, Anne Marie, everybody's going to know everything about you by the time you're done here. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. I, I'm a okay. firm believer in transparency. So, uh, so that's okay with me. Well, that's a good thing. Now, speaking yeah. now, uh, since since you've given me the opening, I got to take it one step further. Of course, I mean we talked sure. about your role at the Buttonwood, but how did you get into the law of attraction? I mean, because I, I well, I suppose it's possible somebody came and gave a lecture on the law of attraction, but I have a sneaking suspicion you were aware of it before that. Am I am I wrong about that? No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I uh, dated a guy years and years ago, back in two thousand one. And he started giving me Abraham tapes, uh -huh. on cassette tapes. He had them. And uh, I listened to Abraham over and over and over and over again. And I was like, this is amazing stuff. <laughs> and one of the ones I really remember, in fact, you were talking about it recently, was segment intending. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I use that. I still use that today. And I teach my kids about that. I'm like, you've got to make a positive intention before everything you do. You know, you get in the car, we put my seatbelt on and I make a positive intention. I say, I am a safe driver and I make an intention to have a safe trip. And I, I just think there's so many valuable tools that Abraham has supplied over the years. It's just amazing how many different ways you can change your negative thinking into positive thinking and how you can change your life by just thinking differently. And it's just such a helpful tool that uh, I love listening to Abraham. I've, I've only gone to one of their seminars uh, in person, but yeah, me too. Actually, uh, I would I, love to go to more. And I, in fact, Louise and I went to know, our I, first I one this year on YouTube. Was yes, up. you did go recently. I think it was in April you went. Yeah, yeah. It was the first time I'd ever been to one, and it was it was quite educational. It was not exactly what I thought. I mean, the the format is what you see on the YouTube videos and, and what you see on the videos when you subscribe yeah. to one of Abraham's packages. But being in the room is a little bit different, and it, it wasn't quite what I expected. I mean, it, w it was great. It was fine. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I remember telling the story... I think it was like the next podcast after uh, Louise and I went. I, I was just surprised during the breaks. No one talks to each other. <laughs> I mean, you have a whole room oh, full of right. people who are into Abraham, who are Law of Attraction fans, and nobody talks to each other. I, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what is this, like every other yeah. theater that you ever go to or something? I don't know. It's very strange. But uh, the event itself was great. And, yeah, it, it was weird. And, and it's also, um, it, it's kind of fun when you are going not as a newbie, but rather as somebody who has been through, you know, learning all the stuff and, and you, you're, you know, fairly well versed in Abraham teachings and you hear uh, Esther doing her thing on stage and, and all of it sounds very familiar. It's always the same thing. Well, Abraham himself or themselves. Abraham actually tells us many times, you know, we are, we will love, we're loving to hear every single question you have. We'll be happy to answer all of them. We just want you to know that it's always the same answer. <laughs> and they're just basically the way of <laughs> right? saying it's always the same. I mean, it's basically one one concept. Get into a happy, aligned place, and everything comes. All your dreams come true. That's that's basically it in a nutshell. It's true. It's true. Like I said before, life is really very simple. We just make it very complicated. We're good at that too. <laughs> we were really good at it. We find <laughs> yeah. all different kinds of ways to make life very very complex. But on the other hand, that's how we yes. make things interesting too. I mean. Life is about enjoying life. That's the, the biggest part of the message that Abraham gives us. And I think it's probably the most important one. Life is here. We're here in life to enjoy life. And I, I think it's probably the one thing that they say more than anything else that makes me follow what they teach. I mean, they teach some really good stuff. Don't get me wrong. And I love learning how the law of attraction works and so forth. But just the message that we are here to love and enjoy life. I, I mean, you never hear that from any religion. I don't know of many philosophies no. that even suggest that one. Most right. philosophies are actually pretty depressing right. when you come right down to it. It's the only teacher I've ever heard of who said, hey, you're here to enjoy life. Have fun. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me know. I yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> right. Well, I think, you know, well, I, I've thought about this a lot, and I, I think that 
I think that every teacher that comes through has a certain bent, has a certain focus. And I think Abraham's focus is to help us learn how to enjoy our lives better and how to help us um, get our stuff, as they say. You know, mm-hmm. you, you want all these things. We see you frustrated and not getting your stuff. We want to teach you how to get your stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a very, very, very important. But I also believe that we're here to learn and we're here to experience the contrast of life. And so like, and, and Abraham's Abraham has taught me so much, but one of the things that they've taught me that I really appreciate is when they say, you've got to appreciate all of it. You've got to appreciate like the good and the bad. You know, they say that frequently. They do. Yeah. And it's actually one of the more challenging parts of what they teach, but it's very valid. Yeah. And they say that, you know, for example, if, if you're feeling negative, that's great. Look at that and say, okay, why am I feeling negative? What is it? Where am I out of balance? And, you know, what is this that's causing this? And be grateful. They say even to be grateful for the negative feelings. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? You want me to be grateful <laughs> for that? So, <laughs> but when I start to do that, it, it does help. It, it helps me to realize that. So it helps me ultimately to be happier. It's a good reminder, really, now that you say that, because um, I was I was actually a little struggling earlier today. I mean, Louise and I went out to do a couple things for fun, and at one point she commented that I was kind of distant, and I apologize because I really was. I mean, I was I was off in a place that was not a real happy place, and I was kind of stuck there, and I wasn't actively taking the time to appreciate the fact that I was stuck there because that's not normally something we do, right? Even those of us who are deliberate creators, we we still kind of slip up at times and. There I was in that, uh, just kind of, you know, I, I, was, I was what Esther calls ornery, a word that I never use yes, in any other context, right. right? I never use that in common conversation, but ornery, it, it kind of applies. I was in an ornery mood. Yep. And when you're in that yep. ornery mood, the last thing you think about is, well, I so appreciate it. I'm feeling ornery. It's just not what comes <laughs> to mind naturally. <laughs> but yeah. it is important to recognize it. And, and even as you were saying it just now, it was lightening my feeling about that experience this afternoon, just by just by mentioning it. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. There, mm-hmm. there, there was something good in that, and and I didn't necessarily know it at the time, but there was something good in it. And I don't even have to know what the good is; it will show up in one way. Actually, it'll probably show up in a lot of ways, actually. But it will show up in at least one way, and probably more than one way. And it doesn't really matter when it's going to show up. I can just count on the fact that it's going to show up. So. I can feel good about it. That's right. And, and you know, you know that if you stay in a positive um, or keep a positive focus, you know things are going to get better. And that's one of the things I love about the whole law of attraction philosophy or teaching or whatever is that mm-hmm. it's stable. You yeah. know, the law of attraction is, is – uh, a constant law across all the galaxies. Mm. You know, like gravity is only applicable here on planet Earth, but the law of attraction applies everywhere. And so you can trust it. You can trust it. Well, there you are physicists who to... might disagree with that. There are physicists who tell you that gravity applies everywhere. But I, I do understand your point. You know, Abraham has said, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Abraham. I don't know. I, I listen to a lot of teachers. But <laughs> I, I think Abraham has said that, you know, gravity is not, applicable in other universes but um but anyway that's that's diverging i guess <laughs> <laughs> that's all right so, but the law of attraction i mean let's just take the law of attraction and being here on planet earth it's a constant it's it's there it's always there it's always working even if we don't utilize it knowingly we are still um sort of having it happen to us you mm-hmm. know or and, and we're attracting things, whether we think negatively or whether we think positively, we are attracting things to us. And I think the more you know, the more you can consciously, and as they say, deliberately create. And yes, that's, that's where our power is. Yeah, that's true. You know, In fact, that's what the goal is. But it's also a bit of a, a reminder and a, a little bit of a wake-up call, too. Because the way I think about it is everything that comes into my life, I attracted whether I wanted it or not. And that, that's what I call the oh bleep phenomenon. <laughs> oh bleep, I attracted that again. Oh no. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, great. Oh, I like that. <laughs> At first, I thought you were saying ob- oblique. No, but, o- uh, oblique. Oh, bleep. I oblique. like that. <laughs> yes. Oh, bleep. I did it again. I just attracted something else. Something I didn't really <laughs> want. It happens so frequently. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but it's a reminder cuz because until I first got exposed to this whole thing, I mean, I didn't think I attracted anything. I thought stuff just happened to us because that's, you know, pretty much what we're socially taught to believe. But when right. Abraham comes along with this concept, not just Abraham, but other teachers too, comes along with this concept of the law of attraction and Abraham was the one who said it most most blatantly that we attract everything into our lives. I thought to myself, "Oh god, I'm so screwed." <laughs> 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 it's bad enough oh, i can't blame somebody else but now it's all me oh no god i'm so screwed that's right that's right and and you know that's something that you know you're you're good to recognize and good to accept it's very difficult a lot of people are not ready to accept the fact that they create the circumstances in their lives but on the other hand i also realized that as time goes on as i learn to be more selective about how I feel about stuff and what stuff I'm going to focus on and so forth, then actually it's an empowering thing. I mean, the initial reaction is, oh, God, I'm doing all this to myself. But the longer-term reaction is, you know, hey, this gives me a lot of power. I actually get to control what's going to happen in my life. And if I slip up at times, I slip up. But the point is, like you said, this is a learning experience. We're all learning how Mm -hmm. to apply this stuff better and better. And the, the better we get at it, well, the better we get at it, the better our lives end up being. So mm-hmm. that that's a good thing. That's actually not a bad thing, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree every day. I thank God for the power of creation. Yes. You know, because we're creating and we he's given us that power. And so I am so grateful for that power of creation and uh, and my creativity. And, you know, we, we're all creative. We just have to let it out and find ways to express it. We're going to have plenty of opportunities to express them, too, because uh, that, that's the one thing when you do a weekly podcast. <laughs> Lots <laughs> of opportunities to express creativity, let me tell you, which is a good yes. thing. I mean, you, you've been listening quite a bit. So, you know, for instance, how Wendy, for instance, Wendy Dillard, who for mm-hmm. the longest time was doing all the afternoon podcasts. Now she does the Tuesday and Thursday podcast with me. And she initiated a project. She called it Project X. Project X. Mm-hmm. She initiated here on the podcast. That was mm-hmm. last uh, February, and mm-hmm. just yeah, uh, Friday, she ended up transitioning away from her W two job and is now fully self employed. Mm-hmm. As a result yep. of that, I mean, yep. talk about deliberate creation! <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, yeah, that was an exciting step for her. Yeah, I, I, I congratulate her because that was a big step, and it was it was great to see her going through that that and going through that whole process and listening to her thoughts as she transition from one stage to the next that was yeah, great yeah it, it it's like uh we, we often want to have a a, a rule book or a, a step-by-step guide to life I, I don't know about you but early on in life i wondered why life didn't come with a rule book why it didn't come with like a translation <laughs> yeah. manual to translate for me all the crazy things that were being taught to me because a lot of them mm-hmm. you know I'd, I'd look at them askance like what the hell am i learning that for <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been nice to have a rule book, but now I have a rule book and the rule is really yeah. simple. Yep. Yep. We do. I think we're getting more and more teachers to help us understand uh, kind of what the rules are and what the laws of the universe are. And I, I'm so grateful for all the teachers that are coming out now and, and helping us. It's, it's just great. I think we live in such an exciting time and I'm so glad Abraham talks about us being on the leading edge. You know, that's so exciting. So I want to thank you again, Walt, for uh, av- having me on and, in- and inviting me on. It's really been fun, and I look forward to next week. Oh, my pleasure. And and uh, I'm glad that you decided to agree to do it. I, I was kind of wondering who I was going to get to do uh, the Sunday podcast when David told me he was going to move on. I knew that um, I'd find somebody. I just wasn't sure who it would be. And I have to admit, one of the first people I thought of was you. So when you said Aww. yes, I said, oh, yay, time for a happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> yay i like that <laughs> so vg vgy right <laughs> yes that's right vg vgy that's right see i'm learning the lingo it takes me a while sometimes but i'm learning the lingo i'm getting there <laughs> <laughs> very good well now the next thing is i want to see you and louise at a tuesday class at a tuesday, you know, we well, have it first 
You, yeah, you may, first and third Tuesdays at six o'clock. So I want to see you there. You, you may have to wait a little bit until the gardening season is over, but uh, you have a better <laughs> chance of ha- getting that to happen in the fall or winter. Let's let's put it that way. I'm a patient person, and we'll still be doing it in the fall. All so right, very good. I'll, I'll wait. Anne Marie, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to doing this with you next week. Likewise. Thank you so much, Walt. You take care. You do the same, and we'll hope that you'll come back next time as well here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. 